uh, in this problem we're looking at the beam on the pure bending and there's a two parts the first one is um, 434 and this one it's addressing the beam is bent um, about a horizontal axis so here we see what is difference from this problem and that is being bent about a vertical axis okay and in the following I will show you the procedure for this problem bent over a horizontal axis and here is uh, the process I kind of derived uh, earlier and I show you the step in details the first one saying the beam is bent about the horizontal axis is saying is the beam is bent about the z-axis and which is in the horizontal plane and that is the meaning of this problem so if we apply the bending about the axis then basically the moment will be bent uh, will bend the beam uh, to curve up for example like this and of course uh, we can apply the moment to bend to bend the beam down to curve down so that is okay for this problem it didn't specify so here we just assume it's bent to curve up the beam and with these recognitions then the first step is we look at how to get the transform cross section this is the original cross section which composed of the brass which is showing the black and aluminum uh, I shaded in red and to get the transformed cross section is in the such we have to expand or widen the dimensions of one material and such that the transformed cross section is homogenized with the other material and for this examples I choose uh, aluminum as the reference material which means I'm going to homogenize the original composite material in terms of aluminum so here I show it's in red by doing so we pick the uh, scalar ratio that is n and obtained by divided by the Young's modulus of the homogenized material which is aluminum and numerator is uh, the brass which is to be transformed so we obtain the ratio is 1.5 so now we pick this material brass is going to be transformed so we widen the dimension of the brass and by 1.5 fold in the direction of the neutral axis which is here okay this is a key you shouldn't widen the dimension in the vertical direction you must widen the dimension in the whole uh, the neutral axis direction that is a key so uh, this is a with this then I uh, put the dimensions here um, from the original aluminum dimension is 8 and here we widen to 12 okay and both sides 12 so we calculate the um, location on the neutral axis for this example it just passed through the centroid of the transform sections and then we calculate the moment of inertia so the moment of inertia is based upon the transformed cross section is based upon this transformed cross section and here I divide it into two parts and one on the two sides and two on the top and the bottom so here is a calculation for one we simply plug in the appropriate dimensions calculation and calculate this is 142 times to the minus 9 uh, meter to the fourth power then with those basic information then we can proceed to calculate the stress and we calculate the magnitude of the stress in two steps the first one is because we already uh, built up the trans transformed cross section so we first calculate the stress on the transformed cross section then we translate into the original cross section which is uh, which represents the true values we're looking for okay now we look at how to calculate the trans 
the stresses on the transform cross section. We simply plug in using the formula um, sigma equal to minus my over i, and that is our generic formula. And here we focus on the magnitudes only. So here I ignore the minus. So for example, on the material two here, the maximum stress is on the top or at the bottom. And for magnitudes, uh, we don't care. So here I pick up the top one for demonstrations. The maximum stress for material two on the top is given by M Y. Y is 16 millimeter that is measured from the neutral axis. Here is the neutral axis passing through this centroid here. Okay, 16 is measured from here to here. And I is the values we've been calculated earlier. And the same, the maximum bending stress on material one is on the top or bottom. Here I pick top for demonstration, the same formula. And once we obtain the calculation of the stresses on the transform, we translate it into the original. Original is this. Um, a material two which represents the aluminum, that is the same. So here we translate it. For brasses, the brasses has been transformed. So here we have to transform back. And in a way, the transformation is this. For whatever we calculated on the transform cross section, you must multiply with the scalar, which is 1.5, and to get the value which representing the true values of the stress. And so we're using this transformation, we can proceed. For these problems, the design criteria is this. The maximum stress must be less than or uh, equal to the allowable stress. So for alumina, we plug into this information, alumina, and again, we calculate it is this value. Plug into here, less than or equal to the 100 MPa, which is given. So from here, we calculated the, the moment must be uh, under this value. The same, the maximum stress in brass, which is calculated here by this value, is <coughs> lower than or equal to the allowable stress, which is 160 MPa given. So using this criteria, and again, don't forget, multiply with this vector. So obtain m equal to uh, less than or equal to this number. So we compare the two values. So we know the moment must be uh, lower than uh, this value, uh, about eight hundred eighty-seven point five.